Hey everyone, in this video, we're going to be walking through and solving a problem using the bisection method in Python. We're going to set up this as a Python function, as this will give us some flexibility to use this code again in the future for any function that we want. In terms of the theory behind the bisection method, I will leave a link in the description below if you're unsure of the steps that we take when solving the bisection method. So let's get right into this. To define our function, we need to type def and then give it a name. So let's just call it the bisection method. Then we are going to have four parameters. So our user will give us four arguments to satisfy these parameters. Let's first ask for their function, func, and the user will input this as a string. Then we need some bounds across which our user suspects or knows that there is a root present. So we will add our lower root boundary A and an upper root boundary B. Then we just need to know our user's acceptable level of error. To interpret the string that the user entered as a usable mathematical expression, we need to create another function. This will evaluate our function for a given input, and this can be done like so. This eval method is what we can use to turn our user's entered string function to something that Python can actually use and interpret as a mathematical expression. Next, we can initialize our error term and ensure that the user's current level of error is not smaller than their acceptable amount of error. Now, we are ready to get into the main looping of the bisection method. Let's say that while our error, the absolute of b minus a, is greater than our acceptable amount of error, we proceed within this loop. Therefore, anytime our error term drops below the acceptable amount of error, our loop will stop and our user will receive their answer. Every loop, we must recalculate the input c, which is just the midpoint between a and b. Then we begin an if statement. So if f of a times f of b is less than or equal to zero, we know that we either have more than one root present or no roots present, and in both situations, the bisection method is not helpful. Therefore, we must tell the user the problem and quit our bisection method function. However, if f of a times f of c is less than zero, we know that we need to move in that direction, and therefore b takes on the value of our midpoint, c. Then we just need to update our current level of error. Without this step, Python wouldn't know when to stop the while looping, so this is very important. Like we just did for our lower root boundary A, we must repeat the same thing for our upper root boundary B. So let's just copy and paste that last if else statement and then just change our A's to B's. Then let's just add a final else statement just in case anything else goes wrong. Now, lastly, all we have to do is print the result to our user and I'm just going to do that in two separate lines like so, but you can present this information to your user however you want. So we have one final step before we enter a few examples and prove to you that this code works. We need to enter in a bit of documentation about our function so that we create it so our user can quickly know what the function is for and what the arguments they need to give is for. So let's just add three quotation marks and Python will auto fill our parameters here. Let's just take a minute and give a short description of the program at the top here and explain what all the arguments that we need are. Lastly, we just tell the user what the output of the function will be. So it'll be our newly found upper and lower root boundaries and the level of error. To call the function that we just created, we type the function name, so bisection method, enter our function of interest as a string, enter initial lower and upper root boundaries, and then the acceptable level of error that we have. Then when we run our program, we receive the following information. And this validates that the bisection method worked correctly. We could also alter our function and try another one like this. And as long as you have one root in between the two specified root boundaries, then you should have no problem with this code. So there we go. We just implemented the bisection method in Python. Although this may not be the most efficient way to possibly code the bisection method, I hope it helped and maybe taught you something along the way. Thank you for checking out this video and I hope it helped your understanding of how we implement the bisection method into Python. If you enjoyed, please like, subscribe, and consider checking out our Patreon page to support the channel. However, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns about the information I provided in this video, please leave a comment down below and I will do my best to address your concerns.